Greetings everyone and welcome to another holiday update video. Yes, they continue unabated. Well, we've uh, covered quite a few so far. What have we done so far? We did uh, drama, action, and thrillers on Monday, Doctor Who stuff on Tuesday, and then uh, a massive, massive comic book update uh, yesterday. Uh, so today we've actually uh, got a smaller one. I thought you could use a bit of a break after the epic length of yesterday's update uh specifically mysteries because who doesn't love a mystery right uh well i certainly enjoy a good mystery um i tend to be kind of selective about which ones um i pick up but uh i got uh, got a few good ones to add to the collection today so let's uh take a look on the holiday update today on the multimedia chronicles Welcome back. So, first up, uh, I, I, there was a sale at uh, tw on Twilight Time's website over, um, was it Black Friday? I think it was around Black Friday. Anyway, they had a whole bunch of their titles marked down to like 10 or 15 bucks a piece, uh, which is like half price or a third regular price. So, uh, normally Twilight Time titles go for about 30 bucks a piece. So, uh, to get them on sale is fantastic because they tend to be really nice transfers. Uh, they tend it, it varies as to how many extras they've got, but uh, some have more than others. But uh, but generally speaking, it's it's you know old studio titles that uh, the studios for whatever reason just have not done releases of. So companies like Twilight Time uh, get the rights to do a limited edition release of them and uh, make them available for those of us who would like them. So one of the ones that was on sale was one that uh, definitely caught my eye because it features um, two all-time great horror movie actors in it. We have The Hound of the Baskervilles, yes, starring Peter Cushing as Sherlock Holmes and Christopher Lee as Mr. Baskerville. Um, so, yeah, awesome sign me up. <laughs> so this one actually does have quite a lot of extras on it. It's got an isolated music and effects track, which all Twilight Times uh, releases tend to have. Uh, it's got audio commentary with film historians David Duval and Stephen Peros. Another audio commentary with film historians Paul Scrabo, Lee Pfeiffer, and Hank Reinecke. Uh, actor's Notebook, Christopher Lee. Hound Mask creator Margaret Robinson on The Hound of the Baskervilles. Um, and Christopher Lee reads excerpts from The Hound of the Baskervilles. How cool is that? Remember when I was talking about that um, Count Dracula that he did that was supposed to be the most faithful adaptation ever? Um, well, you can go and watch my review of that from Halloween if you want to know how faithful it actually was. Um, but on the Blu-ray of that, they had uh, Christopher Lee doing an audiobook, an abridged audiobook of the original book of Dracula, which is pretty cool. So anytime you get the opportunity to have Christopher Lee reading stuff to you, uh, I mean, I, I'm just all over that, man. But uh, it's interesting because uh, both Christopher Lee and Peter Cushing have played Sherlock Holmes before. This is one that this is not from the current update. I picked this one up a while back. This is a Mill Creek release of two miniseries that starred Christopher Lee as Sherlock Holmes. Yeah, so we have uh, Sherlock Holmes and the Leading Lady and Sherlock Holmes and the Incident at Victoria Falls. So very cool stuff. Uh, and being Mill Creek, not too expensive either. So pick that up if you like. Uh, next up, I got two television series, a recent one and a classic one. So we'll start with the recent one. Um, I actually mentioned this show briefly in my comic book update. Uh, well, I actually watched, uh, watched this as it aired on Netflix. Uh, here in Canada, um, this show airs on Netflix. I think in the States, it's on the CW or something. But anyway, um... I guess it's not broadcast on regular TV here in Canada, so instead Netflix picked it up in Canada. Um, but not like their regular ones where they show the whole season in one go. No, it was basically they would post episodes to Netflix once a week. So it was airing on Netflix in time with how it was airing on the network. I'm, of course, talking about what I like to refer to as Archie meets Twin Peaks. We have Riverdale, the complete first season 
I really enjoyed this a lot. I think it's a, a wonderful update and sort of uh, reimagining of the classic Archie characters. Uh, a wonderful, wonderful cast. My, my favorite characters in this, uh, the actresses who play Veronica and Betty, wow, are they ever good. Uh, just fantastic. Taking the, the sort of um, uh, aspects of those characters that we're familiar with, but adding a lot more depth to them. And uh, the same goes for all the characters. Uh, Jughead, I love what they've done with Jughead in this. He is such a fascinating, uh, deep, introspective, emotional character. I think there's a lot to him. And he's actually the narrator of the uh, show as well, which is great. Uh, honestly, I think the least interesting character in this is Archie, because he's just such a dumbass, to be quite honest. <laughs> he uh, tends to uh, create difficult situations for himself more often than not but anyway loving this show a lot um i still have not watched season two um i think it's almost done now actually so i'm probably just gonna binge it once uh, all the episodes are up on netflix uh so this was actually on sale uh black friday for uh, i think it was about 20 15 20 bucks something like that um which is great because it's still a relatively new release and normally goes for about double that so um, I was quite happy to uh, pick it up on the cheap. I was planning to get it anyway because I really enjoyed the show. Uh, but to get it on sale, hey, even better. And uh, and in beautiful Blu-ray quality. Uh, so this has a fair amount of extras on it, basically a lot of featurettes. Uh, we've got The New Normal, Ravendale, The Ultimate Sin, I Got You, These Are Moments I Remember, and um, uh, Riverdale, the 2016 Comic-Con panel, which is pretty cool. And then it's got some unaired scenes and a gag reel. So, great stuff. And actually, speaking of the Twin Peaks connection, uh, Maidkin Meek is in this as well, who played, of course, Shelley the Waitress in the original uh, Twin Peaks series. Well, and the, and the more recent one as well. And then finally, last but most definitely not least, this was another Black Friday pickup. Uh, this is a series that normally goes for about, uh, or a complete series set that normally goes for about 150 bucks thereabouts. Uh, it was on sale for 57 And uh, actually, since then, I've seen it on Amazon going for about the same. So I don't know if that's the new regular price or what, but 57 bucks for this entire series, I could not pass it up. You may recall I actually had uh, the first few season sets of this a while back. And uh, I ended up selling them when the Complete Series set came out because this is a universal release. And uh, a lot of the early season releases of this were the old uh, double-sided dual-layer flipper discs that were, you know, some of which could uh, were almost always problematic. <laughs> Whenever you get a season set of those discs, it was almost inevitable that at least one of the discs would have playback problems. Um, and when uh, Universal went about re-releasing a lot of those shows in complete series sets, they also remastered them onto, uh, or I guess re-authored them onto single-sided dual-layer discs. So uh, it's twice as many discs, but they're all single-sided and no playback problems. So in this case, the show I'm talking about is the classic, uh, you know, private detective in the, uh, well, I guess he's not a private, I guess he's a police detective. Yeah, he's a police detective in the rumpled raincoat. He always uh, has just one more thing to ask. Columbo, the Compopopopolite Compo series. <laughs> this is a wonderful, wonderful show and a wonderful set. And this has absolutely everything. It has uh, all, what, seven? Yeah, all seven se seasons of the show, and then all of the post-series movies. They did about a dozen or so uh, movies after the series. So this goes from like 1960-something all the way up to 2003, uh, which he did uh, a few years before he uh, passed away. But uh, it's got everything, man. It's the entire saga of Columbo, uh, everybody's favorite uh police detective that just doesn't uh, know when to quit because he knows he knows when something smells fishy but uh, the great thing about Columbo and I, I'm pretty sure I talked about this at the time is it's um it's a whodunit series with a twist where it's um it's basically I put it over there a little bit maybe you can see it's very precarious it's a very thick set but uh be because in the opening scene of every episode you see the killer you see the murder, you see the planning of the murder and the execution of the murder, you see everything 
that the killer did to try to get away with the perfect crime. So then what the fun is, is seeing how Columbo figures it out, figures out what the killer missed, how they messed it up in some way, the thing that they forgot, you know. And, uh, and that's what makes it so clever and interesting, is seeing, the fun is seeing how Columbo figures it out, and, and you as the viewer, to see if you can figure out what the killer missed, like what they overlooked, that Columbo's going to, you know, pinpoint and figure out who the killer is. Um, so it's a great show. Um, also, it was a different kind of TV series, and it wasn't the, sort of the standard half-hour or hour-long uh, episodes. It was actually movie of the week. They they were part of like a mystery package that uh, I guess was ABC, I think was or CBS, I don't know, one of the networks anyway. Um, it, it it was um, I think it was I think it was ABC. I think it was NBC. I can't remember. It's anyway one of the networks. Um, it was like one of their movie of the week things. They would have a mystery movie of the week. So there was Columbo and there was a bunch of other ones as well. Um, but Columbo was kind of the one that stuck around out of all of those. Uh, a lot of the others from, from that, you know, Mystery of the Week thing did do quite a few, but, uh, Columbo just kept coming back because it, it was easily the most popular of them. And, uh, in no small part, uh, thanks to the wonderful performance of, uh, Peter Falk as the, uh, inimitable inspector, but, um, not inspector, detective. <laughs> <laughs> and not a private detective, a police detective. I'm just messing everything up. I'm tired. I've been doing a lot of these updates all in a row, so uh, the brain's a bit kind of cheesy right now. Anyway, great show. Lots of fun. If you enjoy a good mystery series um, and a good whodunit that's uh, a little different from your usual whodunit, I highly recommend uh, checking out Columbo, especially since the complete series set is so affordable now. Uh, there's no longer any excuse. Just get it. It's great. You get hours and hours and hours of material on there not going to go through all the extras because there's far too many to go into uh there are some episodes of mrs colombo in here as well which was the spin-off series starring kate mulgrew as uh well colombo's wife um many years before star trek voyager but um i don't think it's the complete series mrs colombo only ran like a season but um uh, there's never been a complete set of those put out. So I guess that's the one thing that's still kind of missing from the Columbo saga. Uh, but you do get a few random episodes in here, so you can at least uh, check out some of it. Alrighty, well that is it, actually. I said it was a smaller update, and I wasn't kidding, so that's why I decided to talk about Columbo a little bit more. Uh, <laughs> just to kind of fill up the time a bit. Anyway, hope you enjoyed. We'll uh, see you tomorrow for what is tomorrow... Oh, tomorrow's Friday. Fright Night Friday. Holy moly. I have got a stack of stuff. Uh, some leftovers from Halloween. And uh, again, some Twilight Time sale stuff. And uh, other sale stuff. And just other random things that I picked up to add to the horror collection. Uh, pretty cool uh, thrift store find, too, actually. So looking forward to showing you that one. So be sure to tune in tomorrow for that. And uh, until then... Thanks for watching. Big thanks to my Patreon sponsors. Be sure to join us over on the Discord chat. You'll uh, find the link in the description. Uh, lots of fun over there if you want to touch base with me and uh, Skin Slip and Stout Man and Garbage Gamer and all the usual gang that you see on Saturday Night Insanity. You don't have to wait till Saturday to chat with us. You can chat with us anytime on Discord, provided we're online, of course. Um, and we have lots of fun over there, so uh, be sure to check it out if you can. Um, yeah. And that is it. So we'll see you next time. Until then, sayonara.